One day, chaos was established, and the city collapsed. Monsters suddenly invaded. And even strange beings known as constellations emerged. The creatures threatened human existence. In such a dynamic world, he was neither a hunter nor a hero. He was just an ordinary person. But one day, That's what you're here for. Here to make me miserable, I know. You know I never liked them, and that's so unforgivable, I know. He became one of the highest ranked individuals in Korea. You ruined my childhood, you hurt me and do it all over again. Just a little more, our protagonist thought, observing the clock hands in the office until finally the long-awaited 6 p.m. hour arrived. I'm going home, he said, standing up and grabbing his things. Good work, everyone, he declared as he waved to his colleagues who responded with an ah, okay. As he made his way, he thought, just leave modestly. This is my life principle, which has allowed me to live a peaceful life so far. Greed generally brings misfortune, so if you can set it aside, you can live a solid life. Pausing for a moment and sighing, he reflected, It's a job I do every day, but I'm so tired. Those kids are still working hard. I've seen this many times before, but it's still nice. Looking through the glass, he could see two students battling in training. A boy leaped into the air, striking a girl who raised her hand, forming a golden shield as she said, Oh, constellation that gives light. It was then that he fell into his memories, thinking, One day in 2050... Chaos ensued, the city collapsed, buildings were knocked down like children's toys, and cars thrown into the air exploded. Monsters suddenly invaded, and even strange beings like constellations appeared. Winged creatures with threatening claws and teeth, thirsty for destruction, salivating hungrily for human flesh. That's when people emerged in armor, wielding weapons like in ancient times, heroes ready to protect their own. People who were capable of using magical powers through awakening or something like that began to appear. Monsters and awakened ones have engaged in countless wars, and now we have reached a temporary balance. That building was the Seoul Academy in Korea. It is a place that teaches awakened miners to become proper hunters, but it is also where our protagonist has worked for nine years. Awakened hunters, constellations, it all sounds really cool, but it's irrelevant for normal people like me, he thought as he held on to the subway on his way home, with a look of discouragement. The night had arrived. The lights illuminated the windows of the buildings, and our protagonist, wearing comfortable clothes, was drinking a beverage relaxed on the sofa. Ah, this is refreshing, he said while watching the news. The number of missing persons this month has reached 200. The Hunters Association says that most of the missing persons are connected to the Slaughter King constellation, and they are trying to devise a plan. Tired of the same old news, he picked up his phone and thought, it's the same thing every day. The Slaughter King is devastating the North. It's like this every day. The news continued as background noise. Our next story is the growing disagreement between the Hunters Association and the Civil Coalition over budget issues. Playing his usual wild rift, our protagonist commented, Disagreement between the Hunters Association and the Civil Coalition. Are they still fighting? One side wants to spend more, while the other wants to cut expenses. This will never end. He turned off the TV, thinking, Although the world has changed, those who are profiting from all this continue to live well, and corruption persists. It seems nothing has really changed. Lifting his phone again, he commented to himself, but all this is done by people more intelligent and capable than me. What can someone like me do? Then, celebrating an achievement in the game, he exclaimed, Oh, I got a unique item. I can sell it for a fried chicken. Our protagonist stretched with his white t-shirt and black hair and thought, Some people might call me a loser or a coward for thinking this way, but I'd say I'm truly wise. The more you give up, the easier life becomes. There's no need to cry when your efforts don't bear fruit, nor to feel inadequate and depressed due to lack of talent. Carrying what you can is the best way to live. Already lying in his bed, he placed the phone on the bedside table and settled in, ready to fall asleep. But something caught his attention. The phone screen lit up and he wondered, who is it at this hour? 
Looking at the screen, he saw the message that would change his life exactly at 11.55 p.m. Unknown number, do you want to become an awakened? Guaranteed 100% match with a constellation. Opportunity for life-changing awakening system. Free trait and equipment provided upon being named an apostle. Follow the trend. Level up. Ready-made status system. Instant matching upon agreement. This is not spam. Disbelieving, he wondered, what kind of outdated scam is this? Are they really asking me if I want to become an awakened? What a joke. Of course I want to. Just by being an F-rank awakened, I'd get a raise. If you could awaken just by wishing, everyone and their mothers would be awakened. After a few seconds trying to sleep, the phone screen lit up again, and the sound caught his attention. Annoyed, he thought, again, and turned his back, trying to fall asleep while the phone continued vibrating. Until dawn came and our protagonist woke up, stretching his hand to reach for the phone. Is it morning already? What time is it? He groped around looking for the phone, and when he found it, he saw that it was already 7.30 a.m. On the screen, there were zero missed calls and seven new messages. Who sent me seven messages? He asked himself, sitting up on the bed and saying, This is obsessive. I'm glad I ignored that crazy bastard. It was then that as he looked at the floor, he saw a chest next to his bed. What the hell is this? He exclaimed in surprise. Could it be? He asked, disbelieving the possibility while picking up the phone and wondering, Was last night's message real? He saw that one of the messages said, Your approval and consent have been confirmed immediately starting the correspondence with the constellation and granting the system. With a frustrated expression, he said, I said it would be good. I never said yes. What a scam. The next message said, since you were sleeping, the correspondence with the constellation was canceled. However, the system grant has been completed. Additionally, the promised trait and equipment have been provided randomly. We hope you make good use of them. Bending down and touching the chest, he said, is it saying that the equipment is in this box? How annoying. The next message said, P.S. If you say status window, your status window will open. Please try it. You can do it. Our protagonist read and thought, This seems real, but what's with this attempt to encourage me? Then he took a deep breath and said, Sta, status window? This sounds really cheesy to say out loud. Suddenly a translucent blue screen appeared containing his information. Damn, it really appeared. Wow. Approaching the chest, he thought, Well, I'm sure it's nothing special. It's not like I've been blessed by a constellation or anything. But no matter how useless the class you awaken is, when you awaken, you get a raise. So it's not that bad. Upon opening the chest, he saw the equipment description. Trait, Path of a Great Knight. Rank, SSS. Awestruck, our protagonist exclaimed, It's rank SS? Seriously? He got up and started pacing back and forth, thinking, Wait a second. I feel like my heart is about to burst with anxiety. What could be in here? He went back to the chest and crouched down, opening it slowly, and a strong golden glow emerged. Damn, what is this? He exclaimed, shielding his eyes from the intense light. Inside the chest was a golden armor that shone brightly. An SSS rank trait and legendary equipment? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. If it were ten, no, even five years ago I would have been ecstatic. But it's different now. I should throw it away right now. Where are the garbage bags? Our protagonist went in search of garbage bags, closing the chest while thinking... I'm sure this blessing is a disguised curse that will ruin my life. I have no intention of dying in battle. Time to throw it away. Putting the armor in the garbage bag, he paused for a moment and thought, No, it will be bad if I just throw it away. If a legendary item were found in this area, he imagined a guild war where a mage was battling, casting spells. Below her, a man in silver armor said, Our clan will take the golden armor, burying his sword in another, who blocked the attack with a staff, responding, What are you talking about? We found it first. That's when he realized this whole area would become a battlefield between guilds in an instant. Our protagonist got dressed in formal attire and said, let's work on this first. Upon arriving at the office, he went to his boss and asked for the day off. You're suddenly taking half a day off? The superior asked. Yes, I have an urgent matter to take care of. Our protagonist replied, well, if it's an emergency, I guess it can't be helped. The boss conceded, and he thanked him with a serious and reserved expression, thinking, great. That's why it's important to be honest and diligent most of the time. Our protagonist boarded a bus heading to another district in Xi'an, 15 kilometers away. On the way, he thought, in the end, I decided to throw away the evil item that threatened my safe life. Why don't I check what kind of trait this is, after all? It bothers me that it's called the Path of a Knight. Sitting and looking out the window, restless, he decided to check. Status window, he said, opening his window and checking the description. Trait. Path of a Great Knight, 
Rank SSS. Description. The path of a great knight will lead you to a position to protect the world. You will be rewarded whenever you fight for justice, slay evil, or protect the weak. You are able to learn all skills in the knight class tree. Penalty. Unable to use magic. Unable to use ranged weapons. Unable to use poison and assassin weapons. After reading the description in the status window, he thought, So the only positive is that you can learn all the skills in the knight class tree. I don't think the negative point is too much for me. Getting off the bus, he headed to a deserted area, carrying the equipment in a suitcase, and walked to a cliff. Then he threw the bag away, shouting, Go away! The suitcase fell into the water and floated. Turning to leave, our protagonist said to himself, This is better, and made his way back home. Arriving home, he smiled contentedly and relieved, saying, I'm exhausted. As he opened the door, happy to be home and free from that burden. But when he turned on the light, he couldn't believe his eyes and shouted, But what? 24 years ago, at the New Light Orphanage. This was the year the Great Master, one of the most powerful awakened in history, left Korea with a group of awakened after a conflict with the government. The children and teachers were running in despair as horrifying creatures attacked the hallways. Save me, help, they cried. Because of this, monsters began to appear more frequently, and Korea's security crumbled. The creatures with pointed tongues and crimson eyes attacked. One of them was hit by a panting inmate holding a fire extinguisher he had used to hit the creature, saying, Die! Meanwhile, behind him, another girl was screaming, More monsters have appeared! More monsters have appeared, someone announced. What? The inmate asked anxiously. More creatures approached, drooling, thirsty for violence and death. There are so many of them, we're done for, the inmate thought, and soon shouted, Someone save us, screaming gutturally afterwards. In another area, more men were running for their lives as one of them said, Section Chief, the monsters are coming this way. The other asked, Have you contacted the hunters? The first one replied, Yes, a rank B hunter is here. The other quickly asked, So where is he? To which he replied, The director is in danger, so they went that way. Still running, the other said, What? And the children? And following the other said, I'm not sure. In front of a room with a glass window, a man found two children hiding and shouted, Ah, here, this way. However, his call ended up attracting more monsters in his direction, and he ended up shouting, It's a monster! Run! And retreating, he shouted, Run faster! Abandoning the children locked in the room, begging for help. Seeing that they had been left alone, a boy hid under the table, crying and saying, I'm scared! Others ran in fear, saying, Save me, teacher! And one of the children was leading them, running and saying, Guys, we need to hide! A monster broke through the glass, shattering it and invading the room where the children were hiding. One of them got up and ran away, while another remained hidden under the table, crying. Help! A child hidden behind the door shouted. However, help did not come. More and more children were caught by the creatures, screaming in terror at the imminent death. Under the piano bench, hidden in the corner of the room, was him. Our protagonist as a child, covering his ears to muffle the sound of the creatures and the horrifying screams of his classmates, trembling in shock. Now an adult, he remembered and thought, I don't know if I'm lucky to have been the only survivor in that room. Outside, after the hunter eliminated the creatures, a photographer said, Hunters and survivors, look this way, I'm going to take the photo now. Gathering the responsible hunter, the director, and our protagonist, who with a lifeless expression, kept his gaze lowered. Could you ask this child to smile? This will appear in the news, the photographer requested. Smile, boy. Surviving a disaster like this is a blessing, the hunter said, leaning towards the boy, who remained silent, still in shock. In the present, our protagonist had found the two suitcases he had thrown away on the cliff. The two suitcases contained the SSCS rank equipment. Why is this here? This item could be someone's hope and dreams, but I can only see it as a prison, he thought, observing the item in his hand sitting on his bed. Well, let's see how it came back first. Status window, he declared, and observed what was written when the large golden armor appeared before him with the description, Legendary, Armor of the Golden Divine Guardian. It becomes bound to the one who opens it first. Leaning back, startled, he said, It's a bound item? No way. And what is this? And then he dug a little deeper into the status window. Additional functions. Additional effects of the Oath of the Divine Guardian. Breath control, body temperature regulation, self-retraction, self-repair, pocket dimension storage. Reading all of that, he declared, Wow, it has practically everything that can be seen as convenient. It probably came back through self-retraction. Closing the status window and looking at the item in front of him, 
Our protagonist scratched his head and spoke to himself. My life will be in danger if I'm caught with this in my possession. Maybe I should try to equip and use the pocket dimension storage. How do I put this on, though? Maybe there's an activation word like equip. Before he could finish the word, the armor already began to merge with his body, leaving a golden trail in the air and attaching to his limbs. When the armor was fully formed on his body, he turned his head from side to side, looking at himself and saying, Did that really work? Oh ho, this is cooler than I expected. Our protagonist went to the mirror and looked at himself, striking bodybuilder poses with his new shiny armor. Then he came to his senses, seeing the scene he was making, and thought, Damn, I just thought it was cool. Pull yourself together. There's no use giving me something like this. And observing himself, he said, It's not like I can stay like this. There might be information at the academy. Let's see. Where's the option to put it in the pocket dimension? Where is it? Found it. Then he clicked on the status window, storing his armor in the pocket dimension. Back at work, one of his colleagues was surprised to see him back in the office the same day and approached him, saying, Team leader Yu, didn't you use your half day off? Our protagonist Yu replied, Ah, I came back because I had something urgent to take care of. The colleague responded, leaving, Okay, well, I'm going to head out then. Leaving Yu working on the computer, he thought, Maybe I'll find something if I search the hunter education materials and equipment lists. Conducting his research, he analyzed his class and skills. This trait penalty is worse than I thought so I always have to fight at close range. It's a bit boring. Normally, if there's a big penalty, the benefit is also quite large. But all it said was, you will be rewarded whenever you fight for justice, slay evil, or protect the weak, and you are able to learn all the skills in the night class tree. That's too vague. Then in a low voice to himself, he declared, justice my ass. Organizing a series of folders on the computer, he said, let's start by getting all the materials related to night class skills and melee combat. I got everything I needed. Time to leave, I guess. And he removed his USB drive after storing his research. On the way out, Yu looked around and headed for the stairs, thinking, let's take the stairs so we don't get noticed. Until a loud voice caught his attention. I've already said no several times. Descending the stairs, he looked down and muttered, what's happening? A knight insisted, smiling. Why are you saying no to our proposal? We from the Avalon Guild will hire you as soon as you graduate if you join us. Isn't this a good offer? The woman he was talking to replied, does it matter if it's good or not if I don't want to? And she turned to leave, but the man quickly pulled her, saying, Wait, we haven't finished talking. Sighing, you said, Damn, this is problematic. He thought, At the academy that trains awakened and hunters, there are guild factions, and the competition to recruit students with good aptitude or rare skills is intense. The standard procedure is that the guilds must compete against each other and officially recruit with a contract once they have won. The girl then asserted herself and replied, I know I can get a better contract after leveling up. Do you think I'm some kind of sucker? Irritated, the knight said. Then you're not the type who listens to words, are you? Looking from afar, you thought, Ah, what should I do? As the two argued heatedly. Avalon is an infamous guild for aggressively recruiting talents. I probably should help her, you thought, and then took action. He approached the door and picked up his phone to make a call. Hello? This is the Jiayang Guild, right? Avalon is trying to force a student into a contract. It's on the emergency stairwell of Building B2. Please come quickly. Our protagonist then leaned against the wall, listening and waiting for help to arrive. What are you doing? Don't you know that academy students can't get involved in the contracting process? A superior said, drawing the attention of the knight who was trying to forcibly recruit the girl. That was fast, as expected of the ace of the disciplinary committee. You thought with a shy smile on his face. Damn, I need to run, the knight thought, seeing he was in trouble. Hey, Yang Yunsok, I'm sure your club has already received a warning, the superior said, grabbing him by the shoulder. Ha ha, I know, I was just talking to her now, so, Yunsok said, trying to wriggle free. You, the, thank you very much, the girl thanked, stuttering and bowing. It's no problem. If something like this happens again, contact the disciplinary committee, the committee representative said, trying to calm her down. I'm glad this was resolved well, Yu thought with a smile, until the girl offered her phone to the superior and said, Sunbei, could I have your number? Shyly tucking her hair behind her ear. What? Doesn't she know that his guild is as bad as Avalon? Yu thought, watching the unfolding scene in horror. Sighing, he made his way home, thinking, It may seem like a happy ending, but I feel bitter. I ended up saving a child about to be devoured by a fox by calling her and handing her over to a refined wolf. That's when his status window suddenly appeared in front of him, surprising him and saying, You are applauded for your bravery and for rescuing a lady under pressure. 
The path of a great knight rewards you. Amazed, you exclaimed, What's this? A reward? His options were, One skill point, summon knight, or choose item. Our protagonist then clicked on the window and said, I'm obviously going to choose skill point since it can't be stolen. Later at home, already changed into his regular clothes, our boy opened his status window and was surprised again. What's all this? I didn't expect to have access to all these real knight skills. It's amazing. I can learn unique skills from legendary knights using my skill points. Perplexed by the breadth of his class, he put his hands on his face, sweating, and muttered, My God, it's completely different from what I imagined it could be. He then began to read the skill descriptions. Unique, Grandel's martial arts talents, the Omnisword Knight. Requirements, none. Effects, your ability to learn and improve in all martial arts and combat is accelerated. Choosing this, our protagonist said, Okay, I guess I'll learn this talent. A strong golden light shone around him, surprising him, while the system announced, You have obtained, unique, Grandel's martial arts talents, the Omnisword Knight. You thought, if everything else is equal, the one with more talent will win. Then everything fell silent, and you looked down, thinking, I don't feel any different. The next day, in the break room at the academy, our protagonist was talking to a co-worker. I thought I was going to die of boredom in that meeting. I'm just glad there are only three of those a year, you said. The other replied, We have the midterm exam, finals, and the graduation test, but if you add the sports festival, that makes four. So basically there's one per season. It was then that the colleague who had seen you return to the office the previous day asked, Anyway, what did you do yesterday? The Avalon Guild is going crazy, Yu calmly replied, sipping his coffee. I reported them to Jiayang because they were pressuring a student, the colleague argued. The girl they were talking to seemed to be extraordinary. They're really angry. With a mischievous smile on his face, Yu commented, Isn't that just normal? The third colleague then spoke up. The young master of the Avalon Guild is Yang Yun Seok, right? Apparently the girl he had his eye on has alchemy abilities, so they needed her at all costs. Yu was surprised and concerned, putting his hands on his head. What? Alchemy? Isn't that a skill that all the major guilds prioritize? Oh my god, do they know it was me? His colleague scratched his head and responded, I'm sure they'll find out soon. I'm telling you this because I overheard the people from the disciplinary committee talking. Touching his forehead with dejection and frustration, Yu said, Damn those bastards from the disciplinary committee. Have they never heard of witness protection? His colleagues then headed for the exit of the room and said, Anyway, be careful. It's exam season. It'll be hell for everyone if we lose a team leader. And they waved as they left. Yu slumped on the sofa, collapsing as he thought, This is bad. This is... I can't just accept this lying down, our protagonist thought, sitting on the sofa, as the thought continued in his mind throughout the rest of the day. A solution. A real solution doesn't exist. I can't ask for a bodyguard with my current salary. And even with connections to a guild, they wouldn't be willing to help a mere employee. I wasn't really planning on ruining myself. If I had managed to get the legendary skills and weapons before awakening, I could be living my normal life today. It seems like all of this is part of someone's prank, forcing me to follow the path of an awakened one. Even complaining about it seems like a waste of time. Meanwhile, in the Earth class at the academy, the boy who had tried to forcibly recruit the girl was sitting and waiting until his phone vibrated, catching his attention. On the screen, the data of our protagonist was shown. Name, Yu Sung Wan. Age, 32. Occupation, Facility Maintenance Department Manager at the Academy. Awakening status, negative. Smirking maliciously, he said, I've finally found you, you damn employee. Do you really think you'll be safe after interfering in my business? One of his colleagues then intervened, saying, Calm down, Yun Sung. A student killing an employee will only draw attention. He's already a powerless loser in life anyway. If you take out your anger on trash like him, you'll only get dirty. Then another colleague with a brown Chanel-style haircut sat next to him and said, Just forget it. Let's look for a different target. Angry, Yun Sung declared, You don't realize the importance of what that idiot disrupted. Bringing in Yuni was essential. I'm already irritated just being in the Earth class. The others listened to him in silence, trying to avoid further problems. The Academy divided the students based on their status into Sky, B and above, Earth, CD, and normal EF classes. As a mediocre awakened one, he couldn't get into the Sky class, which would have provided access to most of the major guilds, and ended up in the Earth class. The classes were aptly named, as the difference between them is like Heaven and Earth. The Sky class, the Awakened Ones in the Sky class are important figures responsible for protecting and securing Korea. The Sky class is an incredible networking opportunity, and only those who graduate from the Sky class have the right to inherit the position of Guildmaster of Avalon, 
as it is a matter of prestige and authority. Frustrated, Yoon Sung cursed. Damn it! I was going to do whatever it took to get into the Sky class. I can't even increase my status level. I used every trick in the book. Damn it! His colleague looked at him with disdain for the complaint and said, It would be better to find a new solution now. We can't waste time on that employee. With an aura of pure hatred, Yoon Sung responded, Well, I guess I need to destroy that wretched, miserable bastard. If we don't eliminate him now, other employees will get in our way in the future. We need to set an example. Another one of his colleagues averted his gaze and agreed, saying, I, I think it makes sense. And another added, That employee really didn't know his place. One of them asked the crucial question, So exactly how do you plan to destroy him? Yoon Sung responded with a malicious smile, I know someone who's good at that kind of thing. Anxious, the colleague asked, Ah, you're going to use that collector? Collectors and demon worshippers are hostile to both monsters and humans, being a community of criminals and wrongdoers. Although demon worshippers are dedicated to deities hostile to humanity and cannot be negotiated with, collectors only work for their own benefit and can be used to handle the dirty work of the guilds. Yun Sung looked at him, gesturing with a smile, saying, Why are you so surprised? You know that all decent-sized guilds know one or two collectors. Once he takes care of it, all you need to do is spread a few rumors. Understand? Banging his cup on the table, Yu's boss declared, During the finals? A leave. And five days at that? Have you lost your mind? Our protagonist heard this and thought, I expected this, but he's being really stubborn. He soon reluctantly responded, It's just a few days. I think things will calm down if I hide for a while. The boss replied with reluctance, No way. Anyway, our teaching slogan is unity, so nothing will happen. It's not like you just started working here, so why are you acting like this? As he looked at you in disbelief, the latter thought, It's because I've been here for a while that I'm like this. Just like all Felessa workers who value their jobs, he simply responded, Okay, understood. And he obediently turned, accepting the boss's decision. As he walked through the unit, you thought, At least I told him that the son of the Avalon Guild is after me. So if something happens to me, they'll suspect him first. He'll probably send a collector because he doesn't want to dirty his own hands. A student and a co-worker passed by him and greeted him, saying, Good morning, Mr. Yu. He returned their greetings with waves and a smile, responding, Good morning. Continuing on his way, he thought, Anyway. I'm going to leave the academy for a while. Then he arrived at the unit's merchant. Oh, Mr. Yu, are you looking for a defensive weapon? The vendor said, smiling and resting his face in his hand on the counter. Did the rumor spread that quickly? Yu responded, scratching his face with a shy smile. Come on, what other reason would a non-awakened have for coming in here with that expression? Potion, defensive sword, gas weapon, automatic rifle? Do you want them all? The man offered, placing the items on display on the counter. Do you think I can afford that with my salary? Just give me some potions and a defensive sword. I'll pick them up after work, Yu declared, turning his back and leaving. On another occasion, late at night, in an area with signs that read, Danger, unauthorized personnel not allowed. This is an F-rank dungeon with many monsters. Entry is limited for the safety of civilians. A car slowly approached a tunnel. Arriving at the location, our protagonist approached the entrance with a large sword wrapped on his back, where there was a glowing blue portal. An F-rank dungeon. The lowest level dungeon. Anyone with weapon skills can handle it. Eventually, I decided that I needed to get stronger if I wanted to face the guy from the Avalon Guild. There's nothing else I can do. Opening the system panel, his mission appeared. Subjugation of the Brutal Dog Zero of Three. Reward unknown. Reading the mission, our protagonist commented, So this is a dungeon mission. As he crossed the entrance, the so-called Brutal Dog appeared. It was a dog with flowing red fur, long and sharp fangs, furiously drooling with an aura of rage. The dogs charged towards him and our protagonist said, I have to do this, like it or not. He threw his cape aside, quickly equipping his golden armor and advancing towards the wolves, delivering blows that spilled blood on the ground, taking them down almost instantly. All killed with a single blow? Seems too easy for an awakened. And what about the armor? Right, that's automatic. I can worry about that later. I should focus on a different plan. Yu quickly thought as he observed what he had done, but more dogs soon appeared, jumping at him in groups of three. As he fought and the blood of the dogs flew, our protagonist reflected, thanks to the martial skill, the bodies of the brutal dogs piled up quickly. With each sword strike, I felt my posture and movements improve, as if I was climbing a step at a time. Incredible. After killing ten, I can eliminate two with the same blow. It seems I made the right choice. More dogs jumped at him, attacking mercilessly, with saliva dripping from their mouths, thirsty for violence. Yu's sword left a golden trail in the air, taking them down in an instant. How quickly is my skill improving? 
I can feel them turning behind me. Grandel's martial arts, the Omnisword Knight ability. I know I chose this, but it really is an incredible ability, he thought, taking down another horde. Then, as he sighed and ran a hand through his head, he said, 30 dogs cleaned up. In front of him, a series of colored magical gems appeared, the results of the dogs' drops. If I sell the magic stones, the association will certainly notice that I'm awakened, right? You thought, and then opened his status window. After observing it for a few moments, he asked himself, Why have my skills increased? If I'm at level 4, then it would normally be 17, 15, 17, 3. Ah, right. The effect of the armor means my stats are doubled. You gave a fist pump, happy with the result. Another window appeared in front of him, saying, F-rank dungeon, you have cleared the territory of the brutal dogs. The exit will open once you click receive reward. You read the window and said, So I also get the completion reward? I didn't expect much from an F-rank dungeon anyway. As he pressed the receive reward button, a new window opened saying, The rewards will be directed towards the path of a great knight. Congratulations on defeating the evil beings. The path of a great knight will deliver your reward. After reading carefully, you declared, Oh, the reward is based on my characteristics. And the reward selection window appeared in front of him again. Perplexed, he wondered, They're giving me all this for clearing this small F-rank dungeon? An SSS rank characteristic is truly something else. As he chose the reward, once again you decided to choose another skill point. Looking at his skills, he thought, This isn't right. I don't like the passive characteristic that makes your boss's luck sour. That's when he came across something interesting and said, I found it. This one. He read the skill that said, Unique vision of the elemental knight Solarian's forest blade, a guardian of the forest for many centuries. However, because he died before finding a suitable heir, his vision faded into mere legend. Effect. All stats growth value plus 20. Receive the reverence of all forest spirits. Satisfied, our protagonist stated, The stat growth value is good, and there are no penalties. I really like this. When he chose the skill, a great golden light shone around him, enveloping his armor. Yu was teleported to a forested area, while the system announced that the reward had been deposited and the exit would open soon. Observing everything around him, Yu said, Wow, this is insane. I'm only at level 4, but my stats are skyrocketing. At this rate, the top 3 guilds in Korea will be fighting over me. Things have become much more complicated than I expected. Something caught his attention, the sound of a branch breaking. Turning quickly, he thought, Are those guys already following me? Is it the scavenger? It was a mistake to leave like this. It seems they can't show themselves because of my armor. I should find him before he escapes. With his hand on his waist, our protagonist thought, while a white bird flew around him, singing, trying to get his attention. The problem is, I have no way to find him. The bird followed a direction and came back. It seemed to want him to follow. Until finally, you observed that more birds had gathered in the same location and thought, Wait, are they showing me the way? Is this the effect of the Solarian Forest Blade vision I just received? So this is what a forest attack can mean. Putting his hand back, he took a dagger and threw it in the direction where the birds were, with precision and force, saying, Take this! A scream echoed after the dagger flew, and the birds flew away in fright. I got him, I'm quite clever. Maybe I can't use long-range weapons, but throwing weapons are allowed, right? Our protagonist proudly celebrated. But his joy was soon cut short by the system, which issued a warning in a bright red window in front of him. Do not use dishonorable tactics as a knight. Throwing weapons is prohibited. If you violate this rule, you will receive an additional penalty. With a surprised expression, you exclaimed, What? This is not allowed? Receiving an additional penalty is too severe. I was just defending myself. However, realizing that there were other priorities at the moment, he closed the window and approached the fallen scavenger. A bespectacled man, groaning in pain, was lying on the ground. He seems injured, but he may have a hidden weapon. I need to be cautious, you thought, drawing his sword and keeping it raised. The man struggled to get up, sitting down, and said, Wait, Golden Knight, I... I wasn't after you. I was on another mission. Would you have any potions or bandages? The scavenger pointed to the dagger embedded in his thigh, which was bleeding with a desperate look, trying to convince you of his peaceful intentions. What mission were you on? You approached cautiously. Well, I was hired to take care of a guy. Certainly not you. It seems to be someone important. Why would I, a simple scavenger, mess with you? The man responded, still visibly fearful. Extending his hand with a potion, you said, Take this. The scavenger smiled in relief and perspiration, thanked him, uncapped the potion, and drank it. Now I feel better. However, before they could proceed, you sword cut through the air, leaving a golden trail, and decapitated the scavenger. 
Shocked, Yu looked at his trembling hands. I, I killed him. I've never killed anyone before, but he was here to eliminate me. I'm sorry, but it was necessary to protect my identity. Looking ahead, he saw a group of low-value items on the ground. Are these the items he dropped? I've heard that items automatically drop when a awakened dies. Seems to be true. I need to pick up these items, and I should also copy the data from his phone. Acting with a surprising calmness for someone who had just committed their first murder, Yu wrapped the man's body in a cloth and threw it over a cliff, saying, As for the body, the wild beasts will take care of it if I leave it here. I handled the evidence perfectly. I have nothing else to worry about now. Opening his status window, he commented, I should change the setting to automatic armor equipment as it draws a lot of attention. He then returned to the dungeon portal and said, Time to level up. It was then that two system messages surprised him. Warning 1 broke the code of chivalry, stealthily attacked an opponent who was not resisting. Penalty, you will not receive your next reward. Warning 2 broke the code of chivalry, took the loot from an unrighteous victory. What a disgrace. Penalty, you will not receive the subsequent reward. Frustrated, our protagonist put his hand to his head and muttered, What's this now? Three penalties at once? Isn't this an exaggeration? Well, I just need to clear the dungeon three times, so I hope it doesn't take that long. He crossed the blue portal and entered the dungeon. This time, the place was infested with the Squirtle's cousins, called Blood Turtles. Observing the new targets, he said, So they're turtles this time. I'll deal with them without any problems. He raised his sword and advanced, delivering precise strikes. After finishing off the creatures, the system informed, you have cleared the dungeon, you have reached level 6, remaining penalties 3. Confused, you wondered, huh? Shouldn't the penalty have decreased to 2 now? That's strange. I leveled up normally, but the penalty didn't decrease. Is it because I faced weak monsters? But the brutal dogs were also weak. After reflecting for a few moments, he exited the dungeon and continued talking to himself. I can still level up, so I think I'll train more in dungeons. Heading to the next dungeon, he encountered creatures called ruby-eyed spiders, Giants with rubies embedded in their backs. Advancing quickly, Yu slashed with his sword, crushing the spider's head, which exploded in ruby blood and lights as he tore out the precious stones. The system then notified him. You have cleared the dungeon and reached level 10. Dungeon rewards can override a penalty. Remaining penalties, 2. For reaching level 10, you have gained one more skill point. Putting the sword on his back, Yu continued walking and murmured to himself, after reaching level 10, I gained a skill point, and the dungeon reward removed one of the penalties. Hmm, what exactly defines the condition to receive rewards? Outside the dungeon, he was now sitting leaning against a tree, resting. Our protagonist took off his helmet and savored a snack while reflecting. Unlike the brutal dogs and ruby-eyed spiders, the blood turtles are not naturally hostile to humans. The condition to receive rewards must be to eliminate forms of life that pose a direct threat to humans. As for my next skill... It was a relatively simple problem. Checking his status window, he observed the description of the chosen skill. Unique MGK Master Technology Device. This is the nanomachine device used by the MGK Master Technician, the only one in the universe to receive the Galactic Knight Medal. It expands your system window and offers various convenient functions such as enemy search, minimap, and more. Holding a dungeon guide in his hands, he read the skill and commented with a smile. Wow, this is also a very good skill. This minimap turns everything into a game, providing various information. It will be extremely useful in combat. You put your helmet back on and stood up, thinking, Since they lost contact with the raider, they'll probably send reinforcements soon. Dealing with raiders isn't a big issue. But can I take on the Avalon Guild? With all the evidence I have, maybe I don't need to confront them directly. Three days passed, and the sun shone brightly over the academy. Irritated, Yunsung thought, Why hasn't the thief contacted me yet? He said he would take care of it by today. It was then that one of his colleagues urgently called him, saying, Boss, we have a problem. The message you sent to the thief was intercepted by the Academy's network. Unbelieving, Yun Sung asked, What? As his colleague turned the phone towards him. The post on the official community forum of the Academy had the title, Is this real? And contained a screenshot of a dialogue with a contact saved as big customer, asking, How long will it take to deal with an employee? The sender's response was, Three days are enough. I will contact you after eliminating him. The author of the post wrote below, Someone from a guild seems to have hired a thief for an assassination. Is this true? Yoon Sung's face trembled with rage, and beads of sweat ran down as he stammered, Yo, you're right. How is this possible? His colleague responded worriedly. The employees started spreading rumors after he disappeared, and this rumor is spreading to other guilds. Yoon Sung looked at his hands and murmured, It will be problematic if this turns into a war between guilds. 
Did I do something unnecessary? The colleague, distressed, tried to justify, That's why I was trying to stop you. What was there to gain in messing with that loser? Angry, the leader exploded, shouting, Shut up, damn it! At that moment, his phone rang, displaying an unknown number. Yoon Sung hesitated for a moment before answering, asking, Who is this? On the other end, Yu's voice calmly replied, Hello, young master. It's me, the employee who had to flee due to a recent and unfortunate incident. Surprised, Yoon Sung exclaimed, You! Our protagonist continued, explaining calmly, I've been working at the academy for nine years, so I have a good read on situations. The looter you sent has already been eliminated. Yoon Sung interrupted, uneasy. Should I take this as a declaration of war against Avalon? Yu answered without hesitation. No. How could I try to fight against Avalon? As long as this remains just a rumor, why don't we leave it behind and allow me to return to the academy safely? Yoon Sung sighed deeply and asked resignedly, What do you want? Money? Yu quickly denied, No, I don't need anything, I know my place. Just consider me a stumbling block. However, I have already reported this to the Avalon Guildmaster. You should think twice before trying anything. Goodbye then. With these final words, Yu hung up, leaving Yoon Sung desperate. The Avalon recruiter started shouting into the phone, Hey, what did you mean by that, hello? Yoon Sung slammed the phone on the table, venting his anger. Damn it, that cunning bastard is too smart, I can't even kill him now. His colleague approached, asking, Who was it? Meanwhile, on the other end, our protagonist was dressed formally and neatly, thinking to himself, People always pay a price. I had to do this to survive. In front of him, sitting at the main table in the room, was the Avalon guild leader, wearing an expensive suit and sporting a malicious smile. You were threatened by my son's childish actions. I'm grateful that you want to resolve this cleanly. I want to repay you a little. Is there anything you desire? Asked the leader. Sitting in front of him with a serene smile, you replied, No, I'm just grateful that you have been merciful. The organization leader then commented, Really? Well, well, you are a wise child. After leaving the place, you packed his things into a backpack, thinking, Now I just need to return to the academy on time. Why don't I check my latest status? With the backpack on his back, he opened his status window. Later, back at work, Yu went straight to report to his boss, who said, I understand, I'm glad you resolved things, but I can't overlook that you missed work without notice. Yoon Sung sighed, recognizing the difficulty of life under an FLSA contract. I'm just happy to be alive. I'll get to work now, our boy replied. Elsewhere in the guild hall, Yu's colleagues were talking among themselves. Team leader, I know you went through a tough time. Maybe you should take a longer break they suggested, seeing that he had already returned to work. I can't miss work during the finals. I have to make up for the days I lost, Yu responded while working with his hammer, wearing a hard hat and construction clothes. Back in the locker room, the conversation continued. Did you eat something special? You're not even sweating. It must be harder now that they've doubled last year's strategy, a colleague commented. Yu put his hand on his head, smiling shyly. Ah, I guess it's because I rested for a few days. I think I need to work harder. While thinking... Could it be because of my status? I'm not even a little tired. They changed clothes in the locker room and continued talking after their shift. I'm tired. Working until nine every night is killing me, one of them lamented, letting out a long sigh understood only by those who have been part of the working class. It pisses me off, commented another. You guys can leave early. I need to get something from the training room, said our protagonist, already dressed and heading in the opposite direction. As he walked, he observed his surroundings carefully, thinking... I felt someone watching me since early. Could it be someone sent by Avalon? I should lead them to the training room. He opened the door to the room and entered, waiting for the person to follow. They'll come in soon, he thought, until he realized the person hadn't entered yet. In a loud voice, he declared, You there! Good job following me all day, you can come out now. Then a girl with light red hair and a uniform entered, surprised. Ah, I was noticed. If you enjoyed today's recap and want more Manhua content, subscribe to the channel. We're starting this journey now, and I hope that together we can strengthen this new community. So go ahead and like the video, comment for future parts, and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for joining us, and until next time.